Good morning, everyone. We got to try that again because y'all seem sleep. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to our celebration for our ninth graduating IDDU class. Can we give them a round of applause? So my name is Ashton Faudrell. I am the community relations liaison for the Danville Police Department, and I have had the honor the past eight weeks to be working with these amazing graduates here today. The IDDU program stands for Incarceration Doesn't Define Us. And this program is really to help provide resources and support to those who have been incarcerated and may just be having a tough time or have been down on their luck. So for the past eight weeks, we have focused on a lot of different things. We have come up with goals for ourselves to reach over the next 90 days. We focused on jobs, interview skills, how to fill out applications correctly, housing, also education and how to connect people with the services that we have here in the city, how to manage money, and then also we've had them come over to the police department and go through our Pass the Perspective program. So through these eight weeks, one thing that we really want to do within the IDDU program is make it a one-stop shop. A lot of times what we hear for people that are incarcerated is that once they get released, they're told you need to go over here, you need to go talk to this person, call this person, and sometimes people get discouraged. And so what we want to do is provide a one-stop shop where people can come and get everything that they would need at one place while also giving them a lifelong mentor and someone that they can count on and call to when they need help. So, before we start to recognize some of our graduate testimonies, I see we have quite a few alumni of the IDDU program. If you have previously graduated from the IDDU program, if you can please stand to be recognized. So I want to thank all of you for your continued support and dedication to staying on the right track and helping your peers. I will now call up our first graduate testimony. If I can have Ms. Deborah Scott to the stage, please. good at speaking with a lot of people, but I'm going to try. Good morning. Today makes marks in a significant milestone in life and the lives of my fellow graduates. We stand here as proud graduates of the IDDU program, Incarceration Doesn't Define Us, a program that has equipped me with invaluable tools and knowledge to reveal our lives and restore our back to society, to society, excuse me, I'm nervous. Um, throughout this journey, we've learned how to craft resumes that showcase our skills and experiences, effect, uh, 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 excuse me, showcase our skills and experience effectively. We have been taught by Miss Ashley, job skills, for preparing for interviews and understanding the um, understanding what employers are looking for. This program has also guided me on a, on securing housing, ensuring we have a stable foundation to build our future. Uh, our communication skills, my best of mine, not that good. We have uh, our communication skills have been on teaching us how to address people in the work for you, in the workforce, professionalism and respect, and understanding the importance of punctuality. Um, oh, wait a minute. Teamwork and a positive attitude. This program has also provided us with um, practical skills such as managing our finances, understanding legal rights, and accessing community resources. Um, okay. 
time. We learn how to uh, navigate the. We learn how to navigate the uh, challenges that comes with being a felon, and how to turn our past experience into strengths that drives us forward. Importantly, IDDU has taught us that our past does not define us. It has empowered us to, to see ourselves not as former um, inmates, but as individuals with potential, dreams, and the ability to contribute positively to society. The program, this program has instilled us in a sense of hope and determination. One more page, one more time. Whew. I'm sorry, y'all. To my fellow graduates, today is not just an end, but a new beginning. We have the skills, knowledge, and support to create the future we desire. Uh, let, us do, let us move forward with determination, resilience, and the belief we can achieve greatness. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this occasion with us together. We are proving that incarceration does not define us. Our growth, our commitment to positive change does. Congratulations to for our achievement. Thank you. You did great. Thank you so much, Miss Deborah. Can we give her another round of applause? So sometimes it's really hard for some of our graduates to get up here and have to speak in front of a large crowd, and especially for members of the police department. So just give them a little bit of grace. A lot of them don't like public speaking, but they've um, dedicated their time to come up here in front of you all today. So thank you so much again, Deborah. If I can now have Mr. Hunter Powell come up to share his testimony. morning. Well, she's covered everything. I'm a little slow in that, but dirty. But uh, I'm just going to tell y'all pretty much about how our first IDDU experience happened. Me and my fiance, we started coming to IDDU, IDDU through Com Sources program, the last graduating group. And uh, they were on week six of eight when we started at Com Source, and it was like the second or third day we'd come. And uh, we figured out, found out the day we went that we were supposed to be coming here. Well, you know, makes me a little, a little nervous still coming by here, you know. No offense to none of y'all. But uh, <laughs> appreciate y'all, for real. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Probably, and, and Lee kind of forgot to tell us where we was going, and it's probably a good thing, because I, I doubt very serious I would have come, to be honest with you. And uh, Melissa, she told us when we was, got over there to, that we were going, coming over here, and uh, I don't know quite how to, to, to say this, but we pretty much tried to ditch it. You know, me and Diddy, we were straight wigging out, wondering what we had got ourselves into, plain, plain and simple. Uh, but Diddy's doesn't have no kind of record or anything, but she's been through my, seen me go through my mishaps in life. She don't want one neither. I can't, I don't blame her too much to be honest with you. I've never walked into one of these places and walked out in the same day, so, <laughs> you know. But, uh, so my anxiety was through the roof. And, uh, I started on an escape plane, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was ready to ditch it. <laughs> and uh, Kevin, he stopped. He finally pulls up into the uh, calm source parking lot, and he makes us go on with him. And we came, and we did the little uh, um, simulation. What is it? The Milo system, the simulation lane. Did he, she looked at me. She said, what are they going to do, get you for them? Uh, Impersonating officer now? I said, yeah, probably, probably. But, <laughs> you know. But, uh, 
But anyway, it, it, was, it ended up being real nice, and, and Ashen, she's a real good person. She helped us out the whole time. Uh, Calm Source helped us out for a while. Uh, I appreciate the damn police department and everything y'all do. Uh, we learned a whole lot, a whole lot of stuff to get, on, get us through life. Because most of it ain't got a real pretty uh, background. But all you can do is move forward. There ain't no need in sticking in the past. But uh, I just want to thank Ashton again and uh, my old lady for sticking with me through all this. Because it's been a lot. But uh, y'all have a good day. I ain't got nothing else. Thank you so much, Hunter, for sharing your testimony. A quick, fun fact about Hunter. So in the very beginning, as he stated, he gave me a pretty hard time. He didn't really want to have anything to do with police, the police department, me, or anything. And he's come a long way, and he's someone that gave me a hard time each and every class period, because we have the media here, so I'm going to speak properly. But he, he was one of those people who was always a smart tail. He always had something smart to say. So <laughs> Hunter's come a long way um, and we're, we're happy for him. So let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> Last but not least, if we can have Mr. Leroy Carroll to the stage. Hi, right, y'all. I'm a little nervous. You know, I'm not normally at the police department voluntarily, but, you know, since I got to this program, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of things have happened. Anyway, you know, I struggle. <laughs> anyway, I struggle with life in general. You know, this program, Commsource, has done a lot to, for me. You know, they gave me a, a new way to look at things, and I asked them. You know, she gave me the ability to do something different with my life. It's, it's hard coming from where I come from to end up here. You know, it, it's different. I didn't have no faith. I just got married. Uh, you know, things are better. And it's all because you got to have faith. And that's the one thing I learned since I've been here. And Ashton, she had faith in me, gave me the ability to have faith in myself. So that's the best I can do, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leroy, for your testimony. Also, since starting the IDDU graduation, um, Leroy just landed a job. So let's give him a round of applause for that. I would now like to ask if Chief Chris Wiles will come to the stage for remarks. Good morning, everybody. Y'all doing? Good to have you guys in here before this uh, rain that uh, we got coming our way. And uh, I tell you what, uh, on behalf of the men and women of the Danville Police Department, I want to congratulate each of you for your accomplishment. And, uh, you know, your being here today says a lot about you, your accomplishment. Not only faith, but courage, because it takes courage to make the decisions that you've made. The comments I'm going to make here in just a minute. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to get up here on the stage and speak. And so I, I applaud each of you for that. Uh, I also got, can't, would be remiss not to talk a little bit about the program and its, and its brainchild, which is Ashton Fodrell, the incredible work she does. Let's give her a hand, folks. 
And uh, you, you experienced the impact of this, that, and, and you can see it in the emotion um, when folks come up here and, and speak about the impact that it makes. And, and what's awesome is that we get to see that every time we have a graduating class, and it reinforces how important this project specifically is. Uh, Chief Scott Booth, when he was here, uh, he had the idea of having some kind of program like this, uh, turned it over uh, to, to that idea to Ashton, and she came up with this project and this program, which has tremendous impact. Uh, impacting our community, working together with our community is one of the most important things we do. We're pleased we have to fight crime, right? And we have to have our community's partnership and cooperation to do that. And this kind of activity, this kind of programming that helps bring us closer to our community and have opportunities, it is, it is a fundamental part of what we do in the Danville Police Department. Fighting crime, reducing crime, making this community more safe, and engaging our community in a positive way. And uh, thank you, Ashton, for that incredible work. I also have to thank ComSource and our other partners who make this program work. Could not do it without our, our partners. Thank you all so much uh, for that partnership. So again, on behalf of the men and women of the Danville Police Department, welcome to our facility and congratulations on your accomplishment. There's another comment I'd like to make too about this. If you ever think that one person can't make an impact, change your mind. You see it. You see how one person, it starts with one person, one idea, you can make an impact. Don't ever forget that. To the graduates of Incarceration Doesn't Find Us program, congratulations on your accomplishment. And thank you to everyone here who has had a hand in making that help, uh, making that uh, uh, come, to, come to fruition, especially your support group. It's so critical that you have your support group uh, to, to guide you through this process. Your presence here today is proof that you have the courage to make change, to step up, and, to, and that you did not quit. Because it's easy. It's easy to want to ditch, right? It's easy to, to say, hey, that's like something I can wait to a later time. That's something that I'm going to wait to another day. But you didn't. You didn't quit. You didn't phone it in. You came in every day. In life, I found that I learned more from my mistakes than I have from my successes. That's not to say that we don't do our best to try to avoid making mistakes in the first place, but despite our best intents, uh, we make them. And we will continue to make them, we're all human. Sometimes those decisions may only embarrass us, other times they may come at a much higher cost. Uh, may impact our lives personally, the lives of those closest to us that love us, and even lives within our community. But what I think we can all agree on here today is that if we're willing to be objective and learn from them, our mistakes make us better. They focus us, they add to our life's experience that is often what we call wisdom. They put us in a better position, not only to avoid the same mistake or pitfall, but develop a better awareness of other pitfalls that we will undoubtedly find along our life's trajectory, and perhaps most importantly, to share our experience with others to help them along their journey. Uh, subscribe to an email and podcast called The Daily Stoic, and wisdom is oftentimes a, a topic on that. And here was a quote from that a, a, a recent email. It said, and this is the quote. It says, wisdom isn't just what you seek out. In fact, much of the most important wisdom we learn, life seeks us out. The piece, a piece of unsolicited advice from someone who has been in our position, the painful consequences of a bad decision that become undeniably clear. The question is whether you're willing to be taught. Life is constantly speaking to you. The world is always trying to teach you. But do you hear it? Are you open to it? A Greek philosopher said that we can't learn that which we think we already know. If you're not willing to be taught, you cannot learn. End quote. Uh, since I've been given this, I've been using the same format. Uh, I have a little book that uh, I discovered, and uh, actually my mother-in-law discovered this book for me and, and gifted it. It's called Make Your Bed. It's written by Admiral William McRaven, and uh, he wrote this little book uh, based on a commencement speech he gave the University of Texas in 2014. And uh, if you go on uh, YouTube, if you, if you uh, search that, you can actually find the actual recording of his commencement speech. And so that was so well received, the life's lessons in that, he uh, reduced it down to a book, which I think 
uh, each of you will find very insightful. And the it's, it's simple title is Make Your Bed. And uh, you know, ultimately what that means is one of the first life, life lessons he gives, uh, and it's based on his training in Navy SEALs. I'm sure each of you are probably familiar with, uh, whether it's uh, uh, through a movie or through uh, some kind of a, a program that talks about Navy SEALs and the, the budget training they go through, how intensive that is, how even the best of the best are the, are the only selected to go to have the opportunity to start that training. And of that best of the best, it's only a handful that actually make it through that. And one of the lessons he learned was start every day with a win, make your bid. What I want to talk to you today about is one of the other options in here, and it's the, it's the topic of my theme, which is never quit, ever quit. Of course, you remember you've seen anything about the SEALs if, when they're in the training. You know the one thing that they can do if they want to quit and there's no questions asked? You know what they do? Anybody remember the movie? Ring a bell, right? Have a big bell hanging in the courtyard. All they have to do is walk up there, ring that bell, and all that physical training, that, that mental rigorous uh, pressure that they're put under, uh, can all end with the ringing of the bell. It's easy to do. It's just ringing the bell. You go back to your life, you don't have to do any more. So I want to read you a couple quotes on this, and I think this is applicable to, to, to each of you here today. And this is from uh, the Admiral. Of all the lessons I learned in SEALs training, this is the most important. Never quit. It doesn't sound particularly profound, but life constantly puts you in situations where quitting seems much easier than continuing on. Life is full of difficult times, but someone out there always has it worse than you do. If you fill your days with pity, sorrowful for the way you have been treated, bemoaning your lot in life, blaming your circumstances on someone or something else, then life will be long and hard. On the other hand, you, if you refuse to give up on your dreams, stand tall and strong against the odds, then life will be what you make of it, and you can make it great. Never, ever ring the bell. And so to each of you, congratulations. Uh, I don't know why I hadn't thought about it until uh, recently, but one of the things we're going to do, along with your diploma, we're going to give each of you a copy uh, of this book, and I encourage you to read it. Uh, it's very easy reading. It's something that will, will give you encouragement if you're feeling kind of bad, kind of down and bad. Pick that book up and just read a short chapter on it. It'll fill your sails again. So, congratulations. Uh, you haven't quit. Continue to build on this success, uh, and your life will change and be better for those around you. Thank you and congratulations to each of you. Thank you so much, Chief Wiles. All right, if I can now have Chief Wiles back up on the stage, <laughs> along with our command staff and Corporal Brooks to help me with the certificates. Graduates, please stand. Just also remember, along with your certificate, you'll get your book as well. Miss Deborah Scott. Ronald Burgess. Go right there. You got this <laughs> Isetta Law.
Regina Willard. Brian Wells. Nicole Stanley. Kimberly Carroll. Leroy Carroll. Charles Hunter Powell. Danielle McDaniel. And unfortunately, we had two graduates who couldn't be with us here today, but if we can please recognize Amanda Ledlow and Wayne Jones, if we can give them a round of applause as well. Can we give one final round of applause for our ninth graduating class of the IDDU program? So again, I just want to thank all of you, all of you graduates for being here today, for committing your time, showing responsibility and accountability through the past eight weeks showing up each and every week and ready to work. And you guys have really shown a lot of improvement and growth. I'm so happy for each and every one of you all. And just as I told you every week at class, I love you guys, I love you guys, I love you guys. Okay? So, I love you guys. <laughs> okay, so now's the great um, fun time to eat. So if I can now have Officer Reverend Pastor Coppage to the stage <laughs> to pray over the food. <laughs> <laughs> 